Hello, I'm Chuck Driscoll. I'm from the United States of America and many different states, primarily Montana. And I'm Jennifer Driscoll, and originally from Southern California, but then most of my life was in Montana. We originally moved to Coronado because we found a place, and we decided to just explore from there. We didn't know if we were thinking Boquete, Volcan, somewhere in the mountains, somewhere on the beach. We were totally open to what we wanted to do. And we looked at some places, and this one came open. We saw it on the Facebook page. That's and, Jackie Lang's Facebook and, page. And fell in love with it. We wanted to move to Panama because we traveled around in an RV for over two years. And we had lived in Montana for a long time, and we were pretty much done with winter. Our last full winter there, we had snow on the ground for seven months out of the year. And said, that's enough. <laughs> so we had made our list, and we did our research. Uh, it was coming down to Mexico or Panama, a couple of other places. But Panama kept coming up to the top of all the lists in our research. And we said, let's go. So in June, we made a two-week trip. We traveled through a lot of the destinations that sounded promising and just fell in love with this country. And it moved to the top of the list. We just, we still love Mexico, but I think we feel a bit safer in Panama. We wanted to do the relocation tour, but with COVID and the, the tours were stopped for a while, they were full for a while, the spots, we said, we can't wait. So we bought the online guide, which was money well spent. It gave us so much information and uh, we did our self-guided tour. We stayed in Panama City. We loved that place, but we're not city people, but it was fun. We uh, went out to Las Tablas. We went to Boquete and Volcan and Bocas del Toro. We fell in love with the country. That's, we said, we want to come back here. We rent, um, in this one, we pay 650 a month with utilities. And then that one, we'll pay 600 and pay our own utilities. We've so. owned several houses. I've had many in my lifetime. And I kind of like having a landlord that will do the odd jobs. I left all my tools in the U.S. I can't work on a house anymore. Well, having a huge house and 10 acres in the woods in Montana, um, we just want to play and have fun now. We don't want to have to take care of things all the time. And uh, I'm slightly mobility impaired due to an injury I got. And um, I can't hike up and down 10 acres of property with a chainsaw cutting up trees daily. And that was part of my retirement plan. And well, that changed. And being mobility impaired, uh, there were concerns about coming to Panama. How would I do? Um, well, my mobility is impaired, but I'm still mobile. I can still walk around and stuff. And I'm slow, but I'm steady. I can still ride my motorbike. For us, mobility is not a problem. We get all over Panama. We just fell in love with this place. It's like a Garden of Eden. And the ocean is across the street. I can walk there. We can go in almost any time we like because well, we've learned to move with the tides, go with the flow, as they say, which is a great motto for living in Panama. Go with the flow, especially in the Panamanian traffic. But it's the garden here, the family. We've been treated like family since we've been here. Um, Christmas weddings, it's been just fabulous. It's a great place to be. The setting is so beautiful. We have butterflies constantly out here, hummingbirds. We see a lot of iguanas and there's chickens in the back and it's just a great natural place to be. It's everything on our list. They also wanted us. <laughs> they like us. They show that in so many ways and we like them. It, it's it's, it's like, a happy place. Yeah, it's a very happy place. Yes. Bill and his wife Maria and their daughters and their grandchildren and their children. <laughs> um, and it's their... the whole family. It's great. Um, it's it's kind of like we joined a family, but 
without the awkward family things. <laughs> it's just nice. My favorite store here is the egg store. That's what we call it. And we get all of our fresh eggs right from the chickens. And every anything that we have left over that's natural, like fruit rinds and things like that, we feed the chickens. So we know that they're getting, what we're getting in our eggs is super healthy and good. There's this fabulous patio over here where we spend a lot of time talking and hanging out with the family. They have a worm farm <laughs> that makes their own compost that they use here that makes everything grow. And it's, I've never seen that before. It's really ecologically sound and it's just beautiful. There is, um, and on this road, especially along the beach, there seems to be more and we've wet, met quite a few. And they're very friendly and everything, but we didn't come here just to be in the mini United States, which is what we felt like in Coronado. We wanted to be more part of the, part of Panama. Um, we love the little fondas, the family restaurants that are all over the place here. They have great food, they're friendly, they're fun. We are learning to speak Spanish. That's been the hardest thing of this whole yeah. journey is the language barrier. That's been the biggest obstacle. Uh, we're working hard on it and we've made progress much more since we got here. Um, we're doing better in Panama than we ever did in Mexico. <laughs> but um, we don't see in day to day, we don't see a lot of expats and, and we don't actively search them out, but we have had several occasions where they get together, but it's also still COVID time. And so socializing is kind of at a minimum now. I, I think as we're here longer and COVID dies away, it'll be more of a, uh, an expat. Uh, but we had a big social gathering for Christmas, which involved a lot of expats and a lot of Panamanians. A lot of great and, an, and an unboxing day, the same thing, at somebody else's mm -hmm. house. So we have met some people. And I talk to a lot of people on the beach from Canada and the U.S. and stuff like that when I'm just walking. We're kind of in the minority here, and that's all right. I, I, I don't mind that. We came to a different country for a reason. Uh, the beach here is like... We used to take our kids to an amusement park in Idaho called Silverwood, and they have a, the big wave pools. Well, now we have the perfect wave pool. The surf here is so wonderful. It's not rough. There's no riptide. There's no big current. It's just perfect. And the waves and everything, it's like being in a big wave pool without all the people. Because most of the time, we have the beach to ourselves. Yeah. On the weekends and in the evenings, there's a few more people, but for the most part, it's us we and our go dog. Out there <laughs> and the dog doesn't have to be on a leash because there's nobody for the dog to bother. Eh, the dog doesn't bother people much anyhow, but um, it bothers other dogs. <laughs> That's what dogs do. But she can run free, and it's her happy time out on the beach. It's public, there's even public restrooms here which is really neat. And, and it's a Panamanian, rooms. I mean, you don't, it's not a tourist beach. It's a little bit more murky than in a lot of places. And I know people have said, do you actually swim in that water? Yeah, it's a little sandy, but I mean, LA water in the beach, it's the same. So We're, it's no big deal. Our beach is between two rivers and all of the silt that comes out of the rivers just came, the tide brings it back into our water and churns it up. Uh, some days it's really dirty and full of leaves and sticks and stuff, and other days it's fairly clear. But it, it's it's sometimes it's light chocolate and sometimes dark chocolate. But it also means it's a very sandy beach and a very swimmable beach because you can get out past where it's the leaves and stuff are. Because usually it's right where the surf is. Once you get past that, it's fine, and it's really I mean it's a great. Beach. The only thing is that every now and then we'll get jellies, and I don't like swimming with jellies. Um, sometimes, most of the time, they're not too bad, but it's just every, every now and then you'll get out there. Uh, I think last yeah, week we went out. Quick little sting and it goes away. 
We, I, we were only out there 10 or 15 minutes because there were too many jellies. And we, I said, no, that's just too much. <laughs> but most of the time, we're out there for a half hour, 40 minutes. And we kind of limit ourselves to that because the direct sun out in the water and our coloration, we can get fried pretty good. But I've only gotten sunburn on my neck once, so. And I haven't. <laughs> that, was, that was a concern, but I... I've learned to govern it and manage it, and she tans, I burn. We moved here with a 85-pound dog and a cat that fortunately loved, he has a special backpack, and he loves being in that backpack, which is really good. Getting all the paperwork together, a nightmare, and getting the timing to be right, because we, our trip originally over here was in June, we moved here on August 31st, so we didn't have a whole lot of time. And in that time, we gathered all the paperwork because we had bought the relocation guide, and it, we had all our paperwork together. We had our attorney. We had everything ready. That's the other nice thing is we have built-in animal sitters, which is really nice if we want to see go to other parts of the country, if we want to travel to Bocas again or you know just stay someplace for a couple nights. We can do that because we have somebody to watch our animals, and that's really helpful for us. And I missed this earlier, but one of the big reasons we chose Panama was its location. From here, we can go to so many other places in South America and Central America, and we're still a convenient flight back to the U.S. It's, it's ideal. We can explore the Caribbean. We're about four hours from Panama City. Yeah. So we will, we are leaving in a few days to, to go to the United States and visit family. We'll stay in Panama City for the night and fly out early in the morning. I've been riding motorcycles since I was a teenager. I started on a little 100cc. And now I've ended up on another little 100cc. But I've had over 20, 22, 23 motorcycles in my life. And for about three years, I was a motorcycle safety instructor teaching people how to ride. Um, and when we were in the RV, we each had our own motorcycles. We, when we got married in Glacier National Park, she had her own motorcycle and I had mine. And we explored the whole area up in Canada and Montana around the park. Uh, so it goes a long ways with us. It's just part of who we are. She's also a horse rider. And the horses and motorcycle riders kind of uh, can understand each other pretty well. Uh, and then after we moved here, we sold everything to move to Panama. We, we didn't bring anything. There's still a storage container with some stuff. But uh, so we had to start over with the motorcycles. I sold mine and hers. She had a little and our side scooter. by side that we dropped. And we sold them to friends and family who have them and they're still using them. Um, and when we got here, we decided we would go with smaller, lighter, more fun, um, and way less expensive. These things are so affordable and they're so fun. Um, they're just light, they're easy. You don't have to use a clutch or shift or anything. They're... And for us, the price was, you can't beat it. That was another reason for moving to this area was because we don't want to be right on the Pan American Highway <laughs> and riding on big roads on these little motorcycles. We didn't feel comfortable doing that. And it had been a long time since I really rode a lot. So the area around here is fabulous. There are so many back roads and dirt roads and things. So we will get on a road and we don't have a map or anything. We don't even use our GPS and we will follow it till it ends and see where it takes us, and we go all over that way. Oh, we've seen some amazing places here. Um, it, just the beauty of Panama, when you get out on the little bike, you don't want to be racing around all over the place. You want to take your time, live life tranquil, slow, and slow little bikes are just about perfect here. We try to stay away from the traffic. Yeah. There are so many little Fondas and little mini Supers around here that we can shop at if we just need to pick up a couple things. And if we need something more, we just take the car. Yeah, we have a nice economical little car. And it's, 
Got a great air conditioner. Um, my favorite store is the egg store in the back. And also, I mean, we get a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables from her garden, which is fabulous. We go to Chitre usually for our bigger shopping. We go to Super 99 or we go to Reba Smith for pop and things like that. That There's a lot of things that you can't get here that I like sparkling water. And that's one of the things that's better at some place like Reba Smith. In Coronado, there's more places that have it, but here it's a little bit more limited. We've gone to get. the Do-It Center for some household things, uh, some chairs that um, you might know. Um, <laughs> just uh, some comfort things that, that we can get. Um, but basically the stores we go to are for staples. Uh, we sold a lot of stuff and almost all the places we rent have been fully furnished and we don't really need to buy much. So we don't go to a store unless we really have to. That one of our favorites, um, he can even walk to it. It's just right around the corner. It's, it's an like incredible fish um, place. And it's just a little fonda run by a woman and her mother. And Rintang, it, Rincon del Marisco. Yeah, it's just fabulous. And it's nice to be able to walk somewhere, to be close enough. And the other ones, I mean, they're everywhere, the fondas. I mean, I walk the beach every morning. We come sit out here, especially in the evening, in the afternoon. We, a lot of times we have a great breeze out here. We do use our air conditioning during the day a lot. In this house so far, I think the other house is cooler. That's what we've discovered so far. So we're it hoping we don't breezes. need it. Yeah, because it's more open. There's more air surrounding it. What we've done is adapted to what's here. The mornings and the evenings are the cool times, and that's when the Panamanians are most active, and that's when we're most active. And when you go out in the heat of the day, it's not very active because it's so hot. So you go with the flow, and that's what we do. Uh, as far as the AC, once, once the sun goes down and it starts to cool off with the ocean breezes, and we've noticed a temperature difference out here by the ocean versus being in town in Chitre. Um, we get that breeze, and it's, it's n not really cool, but it's very welcome. We open the windows and uh, turn down the AC a bit. And then when we go to bed at night, we just turn off the AC and let the windows open. The open the windows and listen to the surf. That's what I get to sleep to, and that is wonderful. One of the other people that lives here works in Chitre, and he doesn't have a car. He takes the bus all the time. And you see buses constantly going up and down this road. You see taxis. So there's a lot of easy transportation. I've been really impressed with what I've seen, but I haven't experienced it as a user. We, we got our car very quickly here, and before that we had a rental car. Um, and then we got the, we have all the transportation we need with the little motorcycles in the car. Um, and it, it's much easier for me not to have to try to walk to bus stops and stand around and wait. The biggest challenge was the language, but the things that I thought would be the biggest challenges, the attorney getting a car, getting our driver's license, finding a place, all of those things that I thought would be really difficult were actually really easy with the relocation guide. I mean, yeah. we had everything. We had this place, we had our driver's license, we had the car, we had our visas, all within the first month that we were here. If Jackie's put together the plan and what she charges for it is really inconsequential to what you could blow making dumb mistakes if you didn't well, do Well, just it. the rental car alone out of the relocation guide when we were staying in Coronado to rent a car. And then they turned out to also be one of the car brokers that she recommends. So we had our rental car, which was much cheaper through, through, them, uh, through him. And then he found our car. So that was a lot easier. They helped us get our license. It, it was just really easy to do all this stuff. We gave him a budget. He came in on the low end of the budget and found us a car with only, what, 60,000 kilometers? Yeah, it was, it was what we were looking for. You know, we, we have a limited income now. I mean, we retired into the RV and we thought, well, we can manage our expenses. But every time we turned around, there was another an anticipated expense for the car, 
for the truck, for this, for that. And it was really hard to manage our budget, but we're managing our budget so easily here and things are so affordable. Uh, that actually is another reason I think our <laughs> blood pressure has come yeah. down. And we've just learned to buy a lot of Panamanian products. And like when we go to the Fonda, because we don't know the language and stuff as well, we, it's so nice to just point. <laughs> that's, we want that, 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 and that. And then that's it. It's really easy. You don't have to. It's not stressful once you've done it a couple times. At first, I was a little intimidated, but now it's just there's it's still really challenges. Easy. The communicating, I think, is our biggest challenge. We're getting better. But people here are mostly helpful, especially out here on the Azuero. We, we got a lot more help out here. Um, Google Translate. Google Translate. Lifesaver. <laughs> but actually, I kind of find the challenge is worth it because we're learning. Our minds are staying active. We're engaged. And you don't have a humdrum interaction. Every interaction, you have to think through carefully. So... <laughs> When it comes out as a challenge, that's good. I think we have to be challenged or we get complacent. My name is Bill Horn. I'm here in lovely Playa Rompillo, Panama. I've been here for around nine years. Um, we were right outside of the city of Chitre. When, about five years before I retired, I knew I wanted, I was living in, in the Washington DC area, and I knew I did not want to stay there. The prices are just outrageous. So, I drew a line at the Mason-Dixon line and said, okay, everything south. And then I s figured out why am I l limiting myself? I went to Costa Rica, went to Belize, and coming from Costa Rica into Panama, I immediately felt the change. It was like the infrastructure changed. The people seemed to be more relaxed here and more happy. And even though people, some people were uh, living in what I would consider poverty, it wasn't the, ground, the grinding poverty that I saw in Costa Rica, Belize. So I decided to start looking. So I booked a trip, came to Panama. I went to Coronado. I went to Baguete. I went to Boca del Toros. Then I started coming back, and I came out to the uh, Asuero's Peninsula, and I enjoyed the uh, dry climate out here because you do have rain, but you have rain in, in a space of six months, but then you also have six months of dry, and during the rainy season, you get one, maybe two days of rain a week, and everything seems to flourish. So I decided, why not? Yeah, I found uh, this piece of property it belonged to another gringo, and when I came, I was still working. I still lived in the States, so I bought the property and uh, and slowly making changes. Then when I retired, I came down here, and then I met the love of my life, Maria, and we were at a store. Well, I went to uh, a store in Las Tablas called Super Carney, and uh, she was in the store, and I was buying a cake for a friend for a birthday cake. So she was there and I was struggling with my Spanish. 
I still struggle with my Spanish. And her English is not great, but she's sharp as a tack. So she knows what's going on. So then when I mentioned the person, she helped me with the, uh, the purchase. And when I mentioned the name on the cake, she said, oh, I know her. And yes, she did. They've been friends for five years. So we started dating, and after a while, we got married here in Panama. I think you've noticed the uh, mural coming in. That was done by a Colombian who Maria tracked down. We saw, our, saw some of his work in one of the hotels in town, and it was just, I, I enjoy good art. I enjoy, you know, just the way that it's done and the, the passion behind it, the feelings behind it. So he did the artwork on the outside. He did some artwork on the interior. And if you notice in the apartment, he did the chocolate and white uh, marble type wall. It's called Venetian plaster. And the red wall in the kitchen, that is also, that's Venetian plaster. One is a, an efficiency. And we have a friend of ours from Chitre who, he works in Chitre and he lives out here. And we have Chuck and Jennifer. And then we have a new place that we're just getting ready to get the certificate of occupancy going. And then Chuck and Jennifer are going to move into the new place. So we'll have the apartment that uh, with all the artwork that is going to be uh, for rent. Because I was here single. And then when I met Maria, that's where we were living in that apartment. And we did it for ourselves. Then we decided to move into the large section of the house, and uh, we had that gorgeous apartment, so I said, well, might as well rent it. And then I wanted to build a two-story out here that's designed to be two stories up, because I wanted to get a place with a nice ocean view. As they say in Panama, poco, poco, little by little, you know, when you when you have the finances to do it, you do it. She has three daughters. One daughter lives two properties over, and we have access to that property. And her other daughter lives here. Well, she just she got married to an American friend of mine. Absolutely tremendous. Because I find that uh, it's just a warm, comfortable feeling. And it makes life great. Literally, she planted almost everything else here. Because we had some bushes and things like that, and she did not enjoy them. They were, and then she pulled them out, replaced them. And as you can see, the colors and the flowers and the, the butterflies. When I first got here, there were not a lot of butterflies. There were not a lot of hummingbirds. And now, every day you see the hummingbirds and the butterflies, and it just turned the property into a little paradise. That's something she's learned from her family. She did a lot of, uh, she's a very agricultural savvy girl. She's, like I said, she's sharp as a tack, and it doesn't take her two seconds to figure something out. So I have to keep on my toes.
Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. they're just Panamanian Panamanian chickens. Most of them have been hatched by Maria. We have a little incubator, and she hatches them, and off they go. Occasionally, we eat out, but most of the, most of the time, Maria's cooking. Maria's daughters are cooking. As you can see, right back here behind me, that's we're actually going to make that into like a full-time outdoor kitchen because it, when you cook inside, the heat fills up. You know, like 95% of the time, if you're, not in, if you're not sleeping, you're outside. You know, the patio and the, it just makes sense. We have air conditioning for the bedroom and then fans for like the living room or the dining room. That is a barbecue. So here you have a fire here and a fire in here. You have these little, and then when you want, you can also put a fire in here and you use the grill. The kids, Maria and the her daughters, they love the ocean. They're down there all the time. Most of my life, I've always lived within 10, 15 miles of the ocean. And I seem to, it, I don't know if it's psychological or whatever, but I enjoy, you know, if you go down to the ocean, you sit down, you just listen to the waves coming in. And it, at night, you're sitting here on the porch and you can hear the waves oh, wow. and it just makes life complete. I feel very safe here. Nine years I've had a pair of headphones missing in nine years. That's it. Well, we have a major hospital right on the main highway. It's uh, called uh, Anita Moreno, and it's brand new. Literally within the last two years, they've finished it. And I've had people, one person had a heart attack, a friend of mine, he had a heart attack, went to the hospital, and treated him well. He came out. So I guess that's not a, too, that's not a bad thing. But I've had uh, some medical issues, and uh, when I first came down to Panama, I was having, I had a lot of arthritis. And I was actually going to the hospital in Chitre, and they were accepting my Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I was getting it's a treatment for arthritis, which made me feel much better, and for about six to eight weeks, I was pain-free. But then I noticed that uh, I wasn't getting the pain anymore. So I haven't had a treatment in three years. So it takes a little bit of time, but the pain is almost gone. Felt like I was on a downhill spiral, and then I came here, and with the fresh, the fresh air, the salt fresh air, it just made everything so much better. We're 80 feet away from a bus stop. And we have the little roller buses. And they come down there about every half hour, take you into Chitre to the main bus terminal. And from there, you can walk right across the street. And you're at a big shopping mall. So if you need to get the Super Extra in Chitre, and you can go anywhere in the country you want to go to from there. Uh, I enjoy having my car. And if you don't, it puts a crimp on your lifestyle. But that happens every, anywhere you live without a car. Uh, the only challenge, I didn't follow Jackie's uh, prescription, i.e. rent and then move down. I did it. Uh, backwards, but I would say that 
there must have been a bunch of four-leaf clovers somewhere with my name on them because it turned out very well. But if I was going to do it again, I would come down, rent, look around, and then if you decided to live, then live. Because, like I said, I did it the wrong way, but it worked out. Uh, but I would, not I would not suggest that to anybody. The thing is, a lot of Americans, they are very set in their ways. And if it doesn't go exactly the way it does back in the States, they get upset, they get angry. And when you're in another country, people think, the, think a different way. So for you to accept or expect things to happen exactly the way it did in the States, it ain't going to happen. So you might as well just come down, relax, and do the best you can.